Remember when you were young and everything in life seemed so much more fun and the possibilities seemed endless? Is that still the same for you or has life become a serious business? Wherever you are, you can change it. What if more magic, fun, and possibilities were available to you right here, right now? Join Laura and Alan in the Playground of Possibility as they play, laugh, and explore new ways you can use to make your life more fun and to create more of what you desire. Hello and welcome to the Playground of Possibilities with myself, Laura Borland, and my very lovely playmate, Alan Jones. Hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> not doing my, my high pitched hello this week. No, Mrs. Doubtfire is not with us this week. She's not. Mrs. Doubtfire is Mr. Doubtfire. And this is a <laughs> and this is a pre record, um, guys, so we're not live in the chat room with you. Um so wherever you are in the world, we hope you're having a great day um yes. uh, when you're listening to us. So Alan, tell us about today's show. Yeah, actually, quickly before I do that, let me just pick up on that thing that's just literally just coming in my head. So if you're listening to the show and you're doing it later, which obviously you are because you're not in the chat room now <laughs> as, I'm, as, I'm, as I'm saying this, um, you know, we'll try and tap into the energy of where you're at and, you know, what people require from this show. So, um, yeah, so think about your questions while you're doing it and we'll do it really spooky and try and pick up on them now. Mm. Uh, so today, <laughs> haha, today's <laughs> show is all about business. So business, is it serious? Is it serious stuff? So how hard and tricky and difficult and serious is business for you? Is it something that you have to do? Is it something that you decided you have to do for money? You know, how taboo is the word fun for you when it comes to business? So after all, mm. doesn't business have to be serious for people to take you seriously? <laughs> um, absolutely, because I've got a story about that later. So what if there are other possibilities available with your business that you've never considered before? In fact, have you even asked your business how it would like to play and have fun with you? Ooh, it's a bit, <laughs> that, that's a bit freaky and weird. <laughs> that, it's a bit freaky and weird for like, oh, about 99.99% .99 of the population. What, talk to my business? Yes. Really? Absolutely. So, yeah. So, Laura, let me, let me throw this back at you. What does business, what does business mean for you? That's a really great question, actually, because I think that... Um, naturally. It, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> it means, actually, it means different things at different times. I would be lying if I said that, you know, it's like, you know, does business always feel like fun? No. It's like, does it feel more fun than it used to? Yes. Um, and so for me, it's been very much about a journey. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think actually it was interesting when you were reading out the thing around kind of like business being about money. It's like, you know, coming from Glasgow and the good old Protestant work ethic, which I had been talking to someone about this morning. It's like there there is a thing around kind of like, well, business is about money, right? Um, and so that was really funny because that was on those like on neon lights when you were talking, um, mm. like the, the, the show. And I think that for many people, it is about money. And so the idea of doing it for the joy of it is a bit of an anathema. Yeah, I I totally would agree with that. And, you know, it, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, what can you say about that? You know, it, it's like people go into business because they want to make money and, you know, and I have to do some kind of business in order to make money and, you know, and in order to make money. So they're kind of, there's another theme going on there, which is you cannot make money through fun. Tell that to a prostitute. Well, actually, but that's an interesting point of view because you're assuming that actually sex is for the prostitute and it might not be. Well, this is true. This is true. <laughs> However, when I choose to do it, <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. That's hilarious. Um, that's really funny. So we're going from one contentious topic to another. Um yeah. So what does um what do, what does what, what does prostitution mean for you? That's not what I mean to ask. What, does mean for you? <laughs> what so you know what is business for you? Yeah, it's really funny because, like you, business for me has changed. Um, as a you know, when I was much younger, and I was you know I kind of worked for a business 
it was kind of an institution and it was something that you do you get a job and that's where you stay for the rest of your life and you get a career and it was all you know money was kind of almost a byproduct but not in a good way mm-hmm. it's like you have to get a job to earn money but you have to get a career and make something of yourself in the world and and having a business was kind of making something of yourself or being and you know to have your own business as well to have your own business was you know in my family was like oh my god you know you you just couldn't do it because um, people like us don't do things like that yeah because <laughs> you have business you have to have lots of money you have to be really creative you have to be really brainy you have to go to university you, and all of that stuff that that all of that stuff I had then and now I look at business and you know business for me right now is is, is fun yeah, like you, there are bits of it that, you know, I realise that are not fun. So that's when I start to ask questions. But right now, business for me is like, oh, my God, actually, I can play with business. It's, it's funny, actually, even using that kind of like um, I had a conversation with a uh, CEO this morning, actually, and she was talking about, you know, um, her, her well, her bus- it is a business. It's a, a not-for-profit business. And it was just really interesting because we were talking about curiosity and play in the mm. business and it's like and if people could kind of tap in and do what was fun for them then what contribution could that be because there's almost a thing about you know it's like um in business and in in kind of like and when I, I guess it's like in business it's like you know whatever work whatever work we're doing is some sort of business you know it's like we're either in business for ourselves or we're in business for someone else but we're yes. all but there's something about um there, there can be a real passivity is that word passivity passivity yeah, being passivity. passive Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and it's just it's really really interesting where it's like you know so when people I'm just exploring this as I'm as we're talking I'm like thinking there's almost some mm. sometimes for some people in jobs it's really passive and about being told to and being done to whereas mm-hmm. the thing about business is business is for me it's got much more connotation and energy about creation. Yeah, I. <sighs> I agree. I think, you know, for me, there have been two types of people in the world, as you said, those people who have business and those people who work for a business and mm. never the twain shall meet. Yeah. And, yeah. It's like, what definition of business are we using here? Because, you know, what actually is business? And, you know, the the nicest definition I've ever heard of business that blew my world up because it's like, you know, for me, kind of like the whole wor- world of work was something I was deeply entrenched in unconsciousness in, quite honestly. Mm. Um, and even although I had a real, dis- even though that I knew more must be possible, I was like thinking, yeah, but maybe I'm being really Pollyanna. Um, mm. But it was this, just kind of like this, like eternal kind of like search. And, you know, there was a point, even I think at some point last year, it's like, I thought, wow, even my the definitions that I have of business are really linear. And I mm. really liked when, um, I think it was Stephen Bowman, who was talking about, you know, it's like business is one of the ways that they create, him and his wife create their life. Mm. And, that's and it, it, isn't it for me, it just was like, whoa, what? Yeah. That, where, yeah. Does, where does business stop and where does business start? And... You know, so let me. So going right back to the beginning of my career, I um I started doing anyway. I kind of did a, a number of different jobs and and uh, kind of ended up when I was just how old was I? About twenty one. I worked oh. for a management consultancy, which was owned by three people. Right. One of whom was thirty two. One of whom was forty five, and the other one was was fifty five. So okay. there was kind of a decade between each of them, and they would just, they just set their business up, and they were having they were having a lot of fun setting up their business. How and that was and I loved working for them at first, but anyway, okay. so, <laughs> yeah, it all went horribly wrong after a few years. But but um, you know what was really I looked at these people thinking, oh, they're so bright, they've got degrees, they've done all this stuff, and I don't have a degree, and so I would look at them and envy them and think, you know, I could never have that. Ah. Uh-huh. And now look at me, you know, I'm kind of. 44 years old and I have my own I have a number of different things that I do as my business and I love it and isn't that really interesting because you know it's like I have that conversation with them um, people like all the time where they're kind of like really trying to like fit into the the kind of like the corporate world because mm. somewhere they've decided and concluded that they can't do business absolutely you and- know it's like 
I yeah. still have that at points, actually. Because do, do you ever do a thing where you, you'll be like creating business and then you'll be like, yeah, but that's not real business. It really, if I was doing something, and it almost like, so we don't acknowledge, I don't always acknowledge what I am creating because I'm looking at something else. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, where do we, where have we already decided we're not really doing business properly so that when we do do business, we're not, we don't acknowledge where we are doing it. Exactly. And it's just like, and that seemed quite funny. Um, and so I wonder if we had no definitions of business. I yeah. wonder what possibilities that might open up. Yeah, what if we destroy and uncreate all of the definitions we have of business? That would be yeah. awesome. So, what makes, us, what makes us hold on to the definitions, do you think? Because then we've got something we can define ourselves. We we have to have some kind of definition of, of who we are and what we do. Otherwise, we tell people, what do you do for a living? And if you can, <laughs> how can you, yeah, you know, it's like... You know and what? People, uh, when was the last sorry, time you could answer that question? I I find it really hard and I just kind of go, well, you know, I kind of create my life <laughs> and I'll have fun. <laughs> and, you know, it's it, related to this. Breeze put a question in the in the chat room. She says, what does business have to be just one thing? Most people are great absolutely. at several things. And it's like, absolutely, Bree. And, and, you know, when where have we decided that business has to be, you know, you leave your house, you wear a suit or whatever it is that you wear. You know, it has to be mm-hmm. nine to five. You have an hour for lunch. You get your paycheck at the end of the month or whatever it is. And or you pay your bank account, you know, and it's just like and you have your appraisals and you have your objectives and all of that, you know, all. And if you're not doing that, if you don't have a mission statement, if you don't do have staff, if you don't do appraisals, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't. And with an endless number of mm-hmm. don'ts, you don't really do business. But isn't it funny because actually business but everything you're saying I'm like and a lot of that for me is business done from heads yeah like from your head ow you mm. know what that's really funny it's just like I have a cat sitting in my lap and it just put its <laughs> claw on me and I'm thinking okay you agree too okay mm. <laughs> um, but I'm like what thinking that know? is a lot of that is kind of like yeah probably she's like probably daft humans it's like they're having this conversation <laughs> duh it's just like it's all about yeah. the pleasure um, mm. <laughs> That's funny, she started pudding. <laughs> Bless her. But a lot of business is so done from a headspace. We talk about risk. We talk about, you know, it's funny. It's like um, I've been doing some work with um, with a, an organization. And actually, um, a question I've had is, what, what, what if we stopped looking to solve the problems and started looking at what we desire to create? What might that change? Because, again, it's like a subtle shift, but a, a great big mm. difference in terms of, like, you know, what what would be created, if that makes sense. No, no, no. You have to have a purpose for a business. It has to be solving some kind of problem in the world. It has to be, you know, kind of resolving banking or being a bank or you have to be an accountancy or it has to be a builders or it has to be, it has to be, it has to be. It's like, what is that? You know, know. so it's prob- it is problem solving and... and uh, looking for it, uh, yeah. It's just that it. What I've if we took <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I like, know. I know. Yeah. Pick, me, like, pick, pick me. one. Pick one. And it's like, what if, what if business doesn't have to fit into any kind of category at all? And, and you know, it does come back to that thing around if you're not serious, you cannot be taken seriously. And you know, I have a good, <laughs> great example once of this guy who, um, and I did some networking on this um, lesbian and gay business um, uh, forum, and uh-huh. uh, there was a photograph of me. It's the one that I sometimes put on Facebook, which is me kind of with my head tipped back, kind of laughing. And this guy just messaged me out of the blue and said, "If you want people to take you seriously as a coach and as a, as a serious business coach, you should kind of change your photograph to to have a you know a, a more serious." Um, kind of photograph of you oh, and I'm like really? yeah I know thank you very much yeah, thank you very much for your feedback actually I did yeah. I think I put thank you very much for your unsolicited and unrequested feedback <laughs> <laughs> it's like fuck <laughs> off because <laughs> I was a bit more a bit more, a bit more feisty at the time and because um, yeah it was just so and it's like was I willing to relieve that judgment do you know what he's absolutely right some people might take me more seriously and, and yeah, and it's, there's something in that, isn't there, about kind of like, so for me, there was a point in business where I was almost trying to appeal to everyone. So actually, yeah. I was like, really kind of like had no sense of kind of like where I was and, you know, and um, and what's really interesting now is it's just like, you know, so what will it take to play with the people who, who would like to play with me? Yeah. Um, 
and and just to know that actually, you know, um, someone who I'd met this morning and she was like, oh, it'd be good to work with you. And I was like, you know, it'd be, and I was thinking it would be great to work with you because I think it would be fun. Um, and I just thought, I don't have to work with, but there were other people who would have been sat in that room going, yeah, no, she's not for me. And I'm okay mm. with that now. Because mm. um, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I, I, for me, I used to get really stressed if, if people choose not to come and work with me or, you know. Yeah, they what had, did that say about you? Exactly. <laughs> that I'm, I'm crap and I'm no good and, oh, that, you know, oh, yeah. Man, we've all done that, yeah. Mm. And and now when someone says to me, do you know what, you're not the right coach for me or the right facilitator or whatever it is, I I'm kind of I smile and go, brilliant, okay, thank you so much for that. Because for me, it's like I've I've contributed at the moment whatever it is I can contribute. And, um, you know, people have to make a choice about what works for them. And now I don't, you know, I, I can't say, you know, hand on heart 100%, but, you know, we're, I'm probably about 95% there of where someone chooses not to work with me That's that, or to have my business with them. That's cool. And I'm just laughing as you're saying that. It's reminding me of like, and times where it's like when people came to you for coaching that you actually felt like you were entirely responsible for the results and success for their <sighs> living, or was that just me? <laughs> no, I've never, no, I've never done that. Nope, nope, nope. And if they left and they were unhappy or they appeared to be unhappy, you know, I, I never once beat myself up and told myself I was a crap coach and that I didn't know how to do business coaching properly. No, I never did that. <laughs> and what's, what's really funny about that is it's like eventually for me, it was like that awareness. That was, so when I am focusing on me, I am entirely in my head and probably focused on lack because I'm doing a comparison thing. And when I'm focused on what I'm creating, I sort of forget myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, for me, you know, one of the one of the things that I really got from the from access consciousness is this thing around not trying to understand people. And that I know is really freaky for a lot of people. But, you know, the, the thing is, when you try to understand somebody, you jump into their universe and you completely mimic it. Yeah. And then you walk away with all of these bizarre points of view that you didn't even you're not even aware that you've just taken on and every way you try to understand other people you stand under their awareness and you know you don't tap into your own awareness and your own capacities and abilities it's so freaky but it's also but it's also what we're taught from when we go to school when we're five mm. you know we're taught about taking things apart we're talking about understanding stuff we're talking about solving mm. things and it's just, it's just really, really fascinating where it's like, you know, and here's how not to access your awareness. Step mm -hmm. number one. And then once you get to like step <laughs> a thousand and one, you're like, <laughs> but oh, there is no such thing as awareness. And so it's just, it's just funny. It's funny. Because were you ever told, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but my mother used to say to me all the time, don't do anything unless you understand it. Don't touch anything unless you understand it. It's like... How can you understand something so ethereal <laughs> as business? And because everything is just an interesting point of view, isn't it? I mean, you know what? If you talk to an accountant, business for an accountant is going to be very different to a lawyer in some ways. But, you know, it's funny because even as a kid, it's like on every Christmas day, I used to systematically take all my uh, Christmas presents apart because I wanted to understand how they all went, to, went together. Mm. <laughs> uh, Often yeah. I couldn't get them back together or I put them back together in the way that they didn't first go together. But I'm like, what was that? It's just like from such a young age to just kind of like, you know, to want to understand. Um, it's curious. And it took me a good 40 years like, probably to, to give up the need for understanding. And I still trick myself with it now. I still get caught up in it sometimes. Yeah, because um, actually I'm probably best if I... I don't know, I'll, I can fit this in quickly before the break, I'm sure. It was like for me when I started learning the psychometric tools... Um, uh -huh. And, you know, it was that, you know, people would say to me, but what's the background to the psychometric tools? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Does it work or not? <laughs> yeah. Does, yeah. Is that helping you to, to understand how, you, you know, how you're currently processing your thoughts? Yeah. So does it really matter where it came from? <laughs> you know, and you I know, know that. that <laughs> yeah, well, how, um, many, how many people spend decades in therapy trying to figure out the why and trying to understand uh, why? Mm. Oh, and you know, there's just such a relief in terms of like the not knowing or not needing to know why anymore. I'm just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, it's like, that's kind of an interesting choice. That's not really working out for me. Mm. And actually, because the why about beating ourselves up for me, well, for me, 
Um, because mm. trying to figure me out is like about beating myself up. So, Absolutely. and how often are we trying to figure out business in that way? Mm. If I do this, then they'll do that anyway. Absolutely, yeah. Let's play with that a bit more after uh, after these adverts, people. See you soon. Were you told as a child to grow up at your age and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you're an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choices and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 4433-0001-0625, or Skype us at a tozen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, and welcome back to Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, and my gorgeous business mm -hmm. co-host, Miss <laughs> <laughs> Lottie Lala. Miss <laughs> Lottie Lala. <laughs> So, Alan, so, I really liked your chat in the um, in the break, and we were talking when you said the perfect business plan, and it made me laugh out loud. Mm. How many times in business do people are like, oh, I need to create a business plan. I need yeah. to go and see what the competitors are doing. I need to do market research. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, really? It is so funny, isn't it? It's like, I must see what the competitor's doing, and then I can try and replicate it, rather than just going, actually, what do I want to create? What What can I create? with my business and what does my business well anyway I'll come back to that in a minute but you know what do I want to create with my business that has never existed before that would be fun and be an amazing contribution to the world but no no we have to see what everybody else is doing and how are they doing their budgets and how are they doing their product development and how are they doing their promotion and, and let's stick it all in a, in a written plan that we have to adhere to whether it works or not Do you know it's really funny I, uh, I'm actually I wonder if we were to be in this planet in a hundred years time i think that business will be done very differently mm, absolutely i think, and I think I, mm, sorry, go. well i was going to say that i think there's a shift going on i think yeah. that you know we've been very entrenched in a very head business um mm. environment and i think that's still working for for a lot of people but i think it's not working for a, a lot more people and there's this kind of like transition where we're kind of like i don't know maybe it's only my my point of view um but I'm just curious about where where it will end up because head business doesn't work for me. No, I, I'm for me it's the same, and I think you know the work that Steve and Chutisa Bowman do, um, which is just business in a completely different way, and Simone Mathis, who you know, and her book The Joy of Business has been such a gift to me in terms of seeing my business and perceiving my business and treating my business as something separate from me. 
You know, I was doing, um, I had a, 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 um, a session with uh, Curry Glassell, who does the Right Riches for You for Actually Access Consciousness. And, you know, she kind of just looks at money in a completely different way. Um, I heard that. I heard that yeah. before I ever spoke to you. <laughs> I remember infamous. thinking, yeah, I remember thinking, oh, he's like, he's an English bloke. <laughs> <laughs> I did it in London. Funnily, I know. Like, I know because I remember. Yeah, I just because I remember just I, I randomly happened to hear it. Um. Mm. So yeah. But anyway, we digress. Come back to what you were saying. <laughs> so so in that session, I was saying to her about I am my business, and she was like, "Wait, what? What? Hold on. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> what the fuck? You are your business because you're not your business. You are not your business. Your business is something separate from you. Because yeah. the minute you make yourself a business, you know." You know, what if your business doesn't want to exist anymore and you are your business? Yeah. It's like, oh, that means I have to kill myself. That's that's freaky. Yeah, but you know, but it's <sighs> really, and it, but so many people, we, it, and I'm just like thinking, you know, the first leadership position I held, mm. I my identity was entirely wrapped up in the mm. success of that organization and it was intense because and I actually used to, it's weird how you say things that, that you think are joking at the time but you actually meant I used mm. to say if if the if this if this organisation closed, I'd have to go into therapy. <laughs> and then <laughs> looking back, and actually I would have because I think the thing was that actually it so defined me and it made a statement about me and its success reflected on me, mm. and it was just like wow, zar. Mm. Absolutely, and you know, and and like that for me, it's like you have to have a business that's taken seriously, and and the whole thing around, you know, you are not your business, and you know, I was looking at going, well, you know, I do, you know, I'm doing my bar sessions, and I'm doing my bars teaching, and I'm uh, and I'm doing my reiki and my coaching, and of course, well, nobody else is going to do it, so of course I'm my business. Like, well, no, you're just, those are just the things that your business would like you to facilitate, because if I am my business, doesn't that then limit me hiring people to do those things for me? Yeah, exactly. And what about the accounts? And what about, you know, all the, I mean, I do most of it myself, but, you know, I'm more than happy to pay other people for doing various bits of my business that actually still, you know, are part of my business, as it were. So, and, this, how, sorry. and just when you're saying that, it makes me think, how many of us are trying to get our business right? as opposed mm. to playing with our business. And I have to say, it is something that I'm like, oh, I've fallen into not playing with it again. Oh, the joy's mm. going out of it again. Oh, and it's like, it's almost like I have to keep choosing it again and again um, mm. because I get caught up in my story, yeah. quite honestly. Absolutely. And if you're around people, you know, who have that point of view, you know, I mean, you you kind of commute into the city every day. And so, you know, fortunately, I don't have that, doesn't mean that no, I don't fall into. I walk. I, I, well, you know, I, well, commute. That's what I mean. It's like you, you know, it's like what I'm trying to is you actually go out into an office and and yes. that doesn't. So I, in some ways, I have it slightly easier in that I don't do that. But I still, I still find myself doing that. You know, my business isn't fun. So some of the questions that you know that I ask my business every day, and you know, if anyone's listening, you may want to play with some of these. Is you know, business. How how would you like to play today? Yeah. What fun can we have today, business? What would you like? What do you require of me? Yeah. And that, <laughs> no, and they're really... And just to ask them like from no point of view, I'm like thinking that actually mm. um, in one of the places I'm working, that is, that's that's what I do sometimes when I'm walking there. I'm mm. just kind of like, so what do you require today? Mm. Um, what contribution can I be? Mm. Um, and, you know, just kind of like... Getting into question because, um, uh, you know, the thing, it's like, it's almost like sometimes in, we don't just do it in business, but we do it in all aspects of our life. Like we plough the furrow and then we just kind of like walk in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, And so, you know, we decide in concludings about kind of like certain people in business or certain types of business deals or certain type of people who will or won't work with us or certain amounts of money that we mm. will or won't get in business and and you know all these kind of like limitations where again it's like if we were truly playing it's like it would just be for the joy and that's the thing the thing to think about with everything we do is that money follows joy not the other way around so if you want your business Who told to make you that? money <laughs> <laughs> well you know some some kind of insane guy i think it was gary gary douglas might have been the founder of access consciousness but it's like 
and and you know Simone Molasses is another one. It's like if you want your business to make money, you have gotta have more fun with it. And but it is also worth bearing in mind that just because something is fun for you to do, it may not necessarily make you money. So you know you are gonna to have to ask questions about okay, what would it take for this to make money? You know, business where you want to be advertised, business who actually would like to you know, buy your products. It's that kind, you know, you need to ask questions. You can't just go, well, I, I love knitting, therefore I'm, you know, if I start knitting, I'm going to start making money. Yeah, no. and, and exactly. And then you need to ask questions about, okay, well, who am I knitting, you know, who am I knitting stuff for? Who would, who actually wants these things? What actually, you know, you know, what, what can I knit that would be a contribution that people are willing to give me money for? What, it's that kind of stuff. And it's interesting because Bree's just put in the chat, it's like, um, I went to school for something that basically makes crap money, but I love it. I'm like, but what if it doesn't have to make crap money, Bree? Yeah. Just, just mm -hmm. wondering. Um, because it's like, that's the other thing. It's like people who say, oh, you'll never make money at that. Mm -hmm. It's just like, <laughs> what if that's not true? And, and you know, it's funny, just just really playfully, um, I think, was it la not? I, I don't know what day we're on. It's Thursday. Not Monday, last week. So uh, a week past the Monday in our show, um, just for fun, when our radio show was on, um, I said to... The, we were actually... We were doing it, and I said to the radio show, hey, just for fun, what would it take for you to create me business before the end of the show? I swear to God, I got an email from somebody, <laughs> and I got a bunch of business. Awesome. And I was a bit... I was a bit like... Well, that was just coincidence. <laughs> well, well, it's really funny, because I just was... You know, I, I you know I have no words, and even now I'm trying to stutter to get something out. <laughs> so it was just kind of like because I truly had no point of view about it, and it just seemed really funny to ask it. And then it was like, and I think it was about twenty past. So it was just it was really early in, and I was just like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And it is just like when you get out of the meaning, significance, and the and the and the conclusions the conclusions about what business is and what will make money and how it has to be done and you know and be willing to ask questions and play with it and just you know as you said just just one of those questions is you know what would it take for me to make money from listening just to Laura and Alan right now and you know and anything that doesn't allow you you know to just to kind of have no meaning and significance or expectations about that do you want to just destroy and uncreate it all Absolutely. So I think it's that thing where it's like so many of us are in a linear space when it comes mm -hmm. to how we think we can make money. It's like we think it's transactional and it's not. Well, that's not true. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be that way. I think everything, any, you know, so Bree's saying in the, in the, I know, I'm loving this. In the chat here, I have a family that always question why I went through it because it doesn't make good money. And, you know, Bree, my, my family have been a bit like that as well in terms of they actually don't want me to make money from what I love doing because they're not enjoying what they're doing and they don't believe they can make money from what they're doing. So if I make money from what I do that I love doing, that makes them wrong in their eyes. So they don't want anyone to do anything that's fun that makes money for them. So yeah. you have to get a job. You have to work there till you're retired. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is restricting. And it's like, but are we choosing to be restricted by it? And the other thing is we don't have to tell people what we're doing for a business. You know, if your family are going to have points of view about whether you're a sex worker or not, tell them you work. I'm not saying Bree is a sex worker because she's not. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, Bree, that's that. that, that. Yeah, no, tell them you work <laughs> in a beauty <PT> shop. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's like just for me, just for fun. Never tell anyone. You know, it's like, um, uh, you know. You can tell people that you're doing something completely different. You don't have to tell everyone what your business is. You can ask a question, but when it does come down to your business, it's like, well, what does my business want to be? What's fun for me? What would be a creation to, you know, what would be a contribution to the world? And what would what would be a kindness to me in my business? And, you know, it's so mm. funny that you're saying that, Alan, because it makes me um, think about how many times have you had an idea and you're really excited, super excited, and then you go tell someone and they totally pee in your parade and you're thinking... Maybe it won't work. Mm -hmm. And it's like that thing yeah. where it's like, so just being like, almost like for me, it's like, um, I don't speak to as many people about stuff anymore. Um, yeah. Just because actually I don't feel the need. Weirdly, yeah. I don't feel the need, but also just because it's like, and I, this lands, how it lands with people. 
mostly I'm not really interested in what people have to say about it mm-hmm. because what has their point of view got to do with me? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Mm, I mean, I'd like you, I used to kind of get really excited and I want to tell the world, you know, oh my God, I got this brilliant idea and then people would poo-poo on it or I would choose not to do it later and then there would be judgment around, why didn't you do that? You're obviously not capable or it might turn out. Or the other thing, of course, is you have these, these you know, we have these concepts, these ideas, these things that really would like to be created and they show up more different than you could ever imagine. Yeah. And when they show up differently, you know, because you're, if you're creating from what the energy of what the creation is rather than what you've decided it should look like, when if you've told someone what you're creating, they already have a view about what it should look like. And if you've created something that you knew you wanted to create and it showed up differently, they're going to think you failed. Absolutely. Mm. Isn't it really interesting that it's like... Um, you know, wouldn't it be amazing to live in a world where it's like, you know, no matter what somebody said they wanted to create, that we were just like, awesome, go for it. And yes. it's like, you know, I just, I wonder what that would create because, you know, yeah, I just really wonder what that would create if we could all kind of like begin to see the possibilities and kind of like have no point of view and just be excited about what somebody else's creation was. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, you know, even thinking that Richard Branson, it's like not all of his creations can kind of like, ended up the way he thought they were going to, but they all contributed something. Absolutely. And and I think the other thing, you know, coming back to that about, you know, supporting and collaborating and, and, and you know, it's like what people choose to create is, is what they choose to create. And what I often see um, is people in who think they're in, comp- you know, that others are in competition with them. You know, as, as, a, as a coach, there are thousands well there are probably millions of coaches now but you know definitely in the UK there are there are tens of thousands of coaches and therapists and people doing all sorts of stuff even in London there are hundreds and thousands of coaches and do I see them as competition to me no because people will come to me because of the energy that I be and that you know the contribution that I can be which is different Laura to the people that would come to you because we Absolutely. offer different things do you know what I mean so for me there is no competition and, you know, I know people, some people can get really hung up on, well, um, you know, I have to kind of make sure I'm better than the other person or they're competing with me and then they start to try and outdo them. And you just end up making yourself into you know, such a, uh, so well, you know, I can't even find the words for it, but you just limit well, so much about what else is possible. But actually, it's, it's, you know, it's interesting when you're saying that because I'm thinking how many of us do business from lack and limitation. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because actually, because you know, I compared myself for such a long time. Like to people, I used to get really pissed off when I thought like people were, people were doing better than me that I thought I was better than. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not an easy one to like um, admit. But I just think it's that thing where it's like you know, and. And what actually was really encouraging for me at a point was it's like I really liked when Stephen Bowman said, you know, that he still catches himself. He still does business from limitation and lack at points, but it's just about kind of like noticing it and then choosing something else. And I think that's the thing where it's not upsetting this up as a space where it's like, you know, oh, you know, it's like you've not succeeded until you're kind of like you're doing it from this space of like joy all the time because, you know, we're here in, we're, we're here in these bodies as well. And so it's just kind of like about being kind to ourselves. What's um, really funny is when you said you're not successful until, and you kind of went in and into kind of a different tangent to, or not a different route to where I went, my mind went off to, you're not a success unless you failed a few times. So wow. how often, I know, like how often, if you have that point of view, you're listening to this, how often do you have that point of view that you're not a success unless you failed massively? And so how much then do you create failure or apparent failure in your life and business, especially with your business, just so that you can prove to yourself that actually you overcame it and that you are a success? Because, you know, how many business entrepreneurs have been bankrupt? I know I went through that myself and there's still a charge on it. You know, I can't be successful until I've been homeless and lost everything. But, you know, it's funny you say that because I remember Simone talking about actually this failure as the success of this reality. Mm, yeah, Simone, bright lady with business. If if you uh, if you're in, she does the joy of business. So you, if you Google Simone Melassis, M I L A S 
AS, I think it is. Um, she's one of the Access Consciousness. Uh, she's the Worldwide Coordinator, I think. But yeah, look up her book because it is, it is absolutely brilliant. Mm. On that note, shall we yes. go to a break, my darling man? And when we come back, it's like let's just see where we get to in playing with business, and also if we can maybe give some people, some people, give people some stuff <laughs> to yeah. take away and play with to see what they can create. So. Wonderful Brie, take us to break, please. Were you told as a child to grow up, act your age, and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you're an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choices and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 4433-0001-0625, or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, and welcome back to the Playground of Possibilities with myself, Laura, and my very lovely playmate, Alan Jones, where we are hello. talking about hello, where we Sorry. are talking about playing with business. And you know, in the break, I was just. Um, I don't know, it just popped into my head. You know, we've been talking about business plans, and I remember I keep to see if we'd be Goldberg. And what I meant was Oprah Winfrey. And when somebody <laughs> asked Oprah, Oprah Winfrey about kind of like, you know, what did they know what was her business plan? It really was like a version of follow the energy. Mm. Because, you know, how do we think that we can project into the next three or five years with business? It's It's just, it's been, it's a real bizarre curiosity for me. It is strange, isn't it, this whole business plan thing? I mean, I remember, um, uh, slightly at a tangent, but, but related, um, when I was, I used to work in human resources, and I used to talk to, teach my managers how to do their appraisals for their staff. And I would say to them, you know, when you're writing your objectives with with the, you know, the person that you are appraising, not giving them to them, you know, you need to kind of, by the end of the year, that, that piece of paper with your objectives on shouldn't be a clean sheet of paper with a whole load of ticks or crosses. It should be a piece of paper with crossings out and things changing and new bits added. It's like it's a working document of, okay, what's required? Where, you know, where, what's the, what's, what, what does the business you know, at the time I would talk about needs, but it's like, what are the needs of the business? What are the, you know, what's, where's, where's the business going? And then how do the objectives change? So when it comes to your business, it's like, what would you like you and your business to be doing? What kinds of people would you like to be working with? And from a space of fun, not from a space of, yeah. I should be working with top executives because they're the ones who pay the most. Okay. And is that going to be fun for you? Or would yeah. you rather, you know, if you are, I think Bree, you said uh, in uh, in the chat room earlier that you work with children. It's like that's fantastic. You know, 
she's kind of so Brie is working with the you know the, with with children because that's what she loves. Sticking in her own room with a whole load of business executives perhaps may not be as much fun. So it's like why and force yourself it, to do something that's not fun for you? No, but isn't it really funny? Because Brie, I've always reckoned I would take on a hundred adults as opposed to thirty kids. So and it's just and I think that's the magic is it's like that actually we all love different things. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And, that's, and just no, that's no. the thing, isn't it? Sorry, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like the, because we love different things, that means we can each do the bit that works for us. <laughs> so where's <laughs> the competition? It's like, and that's oh, so no. funny, isn't it? It's just yeah. so funny how it's oh, it's just so funny how we have these things that we love. I mean, I remember doing some work with this guy and. Um, and he was, um, he had a business and, um, and I said to him, and I couldn't figure out why he would have chosen to do it because it really didn't fit for him mm. at all. And I said to him, what, what made you choose to do this? And he was like, he was really mad at the question. <laughs> and it was basically like, because my father told me I had to, because what I heard was like this guy in this really sciencey thing when actually he was really creative. He was mm. really creative and he was really techy. And it just mm. didn't make sense. And I thought, how many of us are doing things that we don't love because mm. we think we should do it for the money? And because we've told, we've been told as well that, you know, how many things do we not do because we've been told they're difficult? So, yeah. you know, I, I look at technology and, um, you know, would, you know, I don't play around with technology unless you really understand what you're doing. And if I look at the technology that we use, that I use as part of my business in terms of Google Hangouts and and you know, mail shots and working with YouTube and editing recordings and doing loops and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And I think I'm using different software packages and stuff that and graphics packages and all sorts of different things on the computer that I never would have believed were possible and that they're fun. You know, I love playing. How many how many things do we do that we can't do without even trying? Mm. And it was really funny. It's fun? Uh, well, it's funny because it's like I, I overheard this conversation and there um, between these two women and the one woman saying to the other woman, "Yeah, I don't, I don't um, drive the the minibus. You know, I couldn't do that." Mm. And I was sitting there and I thought, "How do you know you can't do it? You've never done it." And it's exactly. like again, it's like how we limit ourselves to deciding we can't do it based on who knows what, but actually then we go on and create from that space. Yeah. So it's like what? So, hello, hello, pussycat. <laughs> Oh, can you um, hear? <laughs> yeah, and um, it's just like, and you know, so so let's let's so when it comes to business, then what what's fun for you? What would your bus- business like to be? Mm. And you know, whose definitions of business are you using to limit what your business can be? Are you choosing? Hmm. That's really. Um, ask me that question again. I want to answer it. Uh, what? Who's no, 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 the first one. Oh, God, no. what? <laughs> Bree, can you just rewind us so we can remember the question? <laughs> I think um, you had just said something about what does your business, is it what does your business desire to be or what's it? God, we're such a me buzz. It's terrible. I was listening. It's really funny <laughs> yeah. to be all totally blanked. What's that yeah. about? Absolutely. So it's oh, like. Wow. So, so everywhere that we can't even see the possibility of having a business of doing what we love. Mm, let's destroy and uncreate all yeah, that. Yeah, because how, because yeah, actually, because mm. how many of us are doing that, or how many? Because I'm thinking there's some aspects of my business that are more fun than others, and there's some, and it's interesting because it's like there's different bits that are dancing at different speeds, and I'm pre- I, I I prefer some some of the dances to others. Mm. Which is also interesting. So, yeah. It's, so you know, it, so, to try and get back into that energy, it's it's about playing with questions. With for me, it's with your business. So, you know, you might start. Uh, if you, so if you have a business or whatever it is that you're doing for your work, it's like asking, what questions can I ask today that will give me greater communion with my business? Yeah. And what does my business require? And and what what does my business? What would be fun for my business? And what would be fun for me and my business? And what would it take for me and my business to have fun and make money and be a contribution to the world? However that is. 
Do you know, it's funny as you're saying that. I'm sitting and I'm, I'm just I'm looking in front of me and I'm just staring at And what I'm staring at is a plant. And I thought, imagine it's like if your business was like a plant. So when we have a plant, we don't decide how the plant should grow. Mm -hmm. We just, you know, we kind of like... And what if the business was sort of like the same energy as the plant? Mm -hmm. So that kind of like, you know, we give it what it requires, but actually it's like, yeah, it's like we allow it to be. That's such a great, that's such a great metaphor, isn't it? Because you look after it, you look at your plant and, you know, you feed it, you water it, you, you repot it, you do. And if it chooses to die, then you put another plant in its place. It's like, so yeah, you, you don't like just you're a keep... cat person, right? You yeah. Don't you're a cat person because you're a plant. It's like, you know, yeah, and there are different kinds of plants. And so you have plants in your garden, some are annuals, some are perennials, and some, you know, some of those ones that don't last very long. It's like, so... Mm. Do you try and, you know, do you blame the plant being a plant that only lives a year? Do you blame yourself because that plant only lives a year? It's like, oh, oh but it's so funny because we totally blame ourselves for the business stuff. Mm, we do. It's just like, what if you could just, so, you know, ask the question, what would it take for me to have more play with and as my business? Yeah. And what contribution could that be? Because generally when we play, mm. and we've talked, we talk about this a lot, it's like we're in that light space. And mm. it's like, you know, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm in my head, it gets all funky. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And so what I try, what I, yeah, and this, this may be an exercise that people may like to play with. Sometimes I sit there and I sit um, and I imagine a business sitting opposite me and I kind of ask it questions and I move from one chair to another. You know, one minute I'm me asking a question and the next and I move to the other chair and, you know, I, I ask to embody the energy of my business and kind of answer the questions. And I know it sounds, you don't have to kind of change as you could just imagine it in your head and just have that conversation. It's like to commune with business, it's like ask it questions. And, you know, we've got a mutual friend who actually talks about um, she had a kind of like a, an energetic board that she put together. She mm. asked the kind of like the, the, the business that she was working with, who would like to be in your board? And put mm. together this kind of like energetic board, um, mm. and I think it's that thing. It's just like you know, whatever works. It's just like if that's fun for mm. you, do it. If yeah. it's not, don't. It's just like, but yeah. actually, and you know, I don't know if writing like big business plans is fun for you. Do it. It's not about yeah. anything being right or wrong. It's just find no. what's fun for you and, and create from that space. Because that's the thing. It's like every business is different, and how people work with their businesses is different. And what Laura and I are sharing is just our own points of view and perspectives and experiences and and possibilities that you may like to try. What you know, it's like what's what's right for you and your business. But don't live in conclusion. Start asking questions and going, okay, what questions can I ask that will give me more ease with business and more fun with business and more joy with business? And if money follows joy. How much money does your business want to play with you? You know, how much money does your your business want to make, and how much does money want to play with you and your business? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know, I'm just what's really nice about that is I'm sitting here chuckling to myself, thinking, and if we were to have this show again in a year's time, we would probably have a very different conversation because it's like actually, that's the nature of kind of like business and this whole mm. creation thing. It's like it's not about nailing down. It's funny I was doing some work with somebody today and. They were moving out from, like, you know, talking about I'm either this or this and thinking about, well, I want to be this. And I'm like, so what if that's just another way of limiting yourself because that's another mm -hmm. definition? And what if it can just allow it to flow in the moment and to be whatever mm -hmm. is required in that moment? Because mm -hmm. it is. It's like business is this or it's this. It's it's a good business or it's a crap business. It's a successful yeah. business or it's an unsuccessful business. It's a profitable yeah. business or it's... So let's get out of the polarity. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> so... so I'm thinking we're coming that, up. yeah, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, we're coming to the end of the show, and so we can quickly tell you that next week we have a, because this is the 16th, this is playing, so the 23rd, we'll have the gorgeous and wonderful Tamara Yunker coming Woo! on to talk about intimacy and playing with yourself. Ha -ha! <laughs> I'm so looking forward to that one. Thanks, guys. Have a fantabulous week, and we'll see you in the 23rd. Bye. Yes, Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Laura Borland and Alan Jones. We hope you enjoyed playing with us today and that you'll come play with us next Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on atizen.fm. 
Until then, what would it take for you to enjoy playing with choices and possibilities to create more fun, more magic, and more of everything you desire? What will you choose today?